Okay, this is Earl Andrews, VE3AB of NettyElectronics.com. Netty Electronics, small basement uh, test facility, and uh, I sell parts and I experiment with parts and stuff like that. Well, I gave you a video on some uh, bad C5739 transistors. Here they are here. They're 5730, 2SC5739s. The bad ones are in that box. Now the good ones are, are over here in this bin. So I told you about how to distinguish the, the good from the bad. Of course, I test them here. This is my test up, this uh, test setup. The Radio Shack 23 channel even has an old XM uh, CB call sign on it. It's from the 70s. And uh, I have a uh, socket here with base collector emitter. Uh, that's the most common configuration for the, the transistors, but also they can come in this other one, base emitter collector. And I have this socket for small transistors. Right now I have a 2N3904 in there. And I can test them at our F levels. Little wee ones. I, what I do is there's my power supply. I have it turn back a bit in uh, voltage. I don't have it running. Uh, I don't have it running at a full 13 volts. Anyway, so I'll hit the transmit button on this 2N3904. And there I get about. Uh, I'm going to turn that radio off. That's the repeater up here in Manitoulin Island. Okay, sorry about that. That won't hurt the video. It's an amateur video, so who cares? Okay, there we go. 100 milliwatts. Out of a little little transistor like that, which is about what you'd expect. Uh, these other transistors I have here that I've tested. C1909, or they look like the old NEC original 2SC 1909s and they all measured good. Good output 3 watts, 2.5 watts, 3 watts. That's pretty good. Here's a 2078, 2SC 2078, 3 watts. Now that's got, I can't, don't have the resolution to show you, but it's a, it doesn't have that fake uh, little flower on it like the Chinese ones do. Uh, Here's some ones I bought that I originally thought were pretty good, but I'm scratching my head now. These are 2SC 1969s. I bought them, I bought a number of them, but they all test a little bit down in what I expect. They're all pretty consistent. They're not like uh, the other Chinese ones that were 20 milliwatts or something pretty feeble like that. These ones all test. Let's see how much I get out of this turkey. Not much. What's going on here? Well, I don't have the power supply cranked up to it. Now I'll put it up to about 13.5 volts. There we go. Doesn't like a low voltage. Don't blame it. Well, there we go. One point, well, about 1.5 watts. It's not bad. So it's, this is an old unit and, uh, C2029 slash 1. This is the original one I took out of this CD. I had to solder extensions onto it in order for the um, to get it to fit back in that socket. Well it's up around uh, 2 watts which is about what I'd expect so you know these 2SC 1969s I paid about six dollars Canadian each for them and at first I thought, well, finally they solved their problems with the uh, cheap uh, transistors that don't work very well. But now I'm thinking I wasted my money on those. And here's the old original uh, CB ones. Here's an MRF force, couple of MRF 476s from the old days. Good three watts out of them. Generally speaking, uh, you really have to be careful with these ones that are on the market today. Here's some 2SC5706s. 
And I got these from eBay and I guess China, Asia. I'm going to put this one in. Try this one. I've been very pleased with these. There you go, two watts out. But it's a small little wee thing with hardly any heat sink. Now, these are all like that. Nice consistent two watts. Why can't they build good transistors consistently? They can do it. Either that or they're flogging uh, their reed factory rejects out on eBay, I guess. Here's some other ones that work fairly well, even though they are from the east. BD 139-16s. I'll try one of these in here. This movie may suddenly end because uh, the batteries may die. Okay, let's try this one. Oop, it's not very good. Well, it's not really a... It's about 70 milliwatt, 700, 70 milliwatts. Well, it's... It's... Uh, let's forget about that one for now. Anyway, what the, the moral of the story is... Oh, what are these things? 1307s. These are the ones I bought from eBay not long ago. NEC, they look like the real McCoy. And uh, I said, well, I'll give these a try. And uh, semi-disappointed. I got one that puts out 2.1 watts. Another one, 1 1.8. That's respectable. That's, in, that's quite good. The other four, 1 watt, 1.1 watt, 1 watt, 900 millil milliwatts. So, not pleased with this batch. Again, I guess I won't get my money back now. It's been too too long. Uh, generally, uh, if you get bad transistors, test them right away and uh, report it, and you can get your money back, <clears throat> which I haven't done in, in a lot of these cases. I've, uh, in some cases, I've assumed they, they'll work because the first batch I bought worked. I figured, well, they're good. But uh, you can't take for granted anything. Uh, these days, not like you could in the 70s and 80s when you bought parts. Okay, I guess I'll close this out now. Oh, here's another interesting piece of equipment. This is uh, this is from China, and uh, the Chinese have some really indispensable and affordable pieces of test equipment. Here is a nice little transistor, and it'll test coils, capacitors. I think this one gives you the ESR as well. Like, they're very good. They're indispensable. They're about 30 bucks. Absolutely indispensable in my la little lab here. They tell you the pinouts, like this one's collector base emitter for this uh, transistor. And, uh, you know, oh, uh, this is an MRF 607 I was looking at just now in that tester. And by the way, the MRF 607 does not like this test setup here. There must be a difference in the geometry of the... There's something about it that uh, this tester will not test MRF 607s. Either these transistors I have are defective or I think it may need a resistance in the emitter of maybe an ohm or so. This circuit does not seem to have that. Uh, but it can test 3904s and little little piddly transistors like that, so uh, generally this is a good way to test transistors at 26 megahertz. So that's my video for today, and uh, be sure to check out nettyelectronics.com, and I can sell you, I test all this stuff, I got lots of time, I, er I retired early from a government job where I was uh, basically uh, cataloging and uh, being a, trying to be some sort of material manager for the small components like this, but uh, of course we didn't have the adequate training. We, uh, now I, I train on the job with my, uh, with my little lab here. I can uh, certainly uh, learn by doing, and I enjoy it far more. And uh, <clears throat> you're welcome to uh, stop by, take a look at my website. I have a big list of over 4,700 different items. Some items are kind of rare, hard to get items. And, uh, you know, I can't test everything. I can, can't test complex ICs. But what I can do is if you try it in your circuit and it doesn't work, we give you your, your money back on the, uh, for some of these microprocess, old microprocessor chips I have and things like that. For transistors, I test them. 
So that's it. I also have a curve tracer over there that I'm learning how to use. And uh, I have a spectrum analyzer and all sorts of nifty stuff that I've gathered here. And the spectrum analyzer is another indispensable tool that I have around here in the shack. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. I'll be posting more videos. I'm going to try and become more video oriented. My other website is hamelectronicsmagazine.com and it's a lot of pictures and it doesn't flow well. I'm going to try and uh, do videos. I like videos. Uh, you can cram a whole bunch of information into a short time period and uh, people tend to can just sit back and relax and watch a video. I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll try and put some more out. Please leave your comments and please stop by my website. You can see higher resolution pictures on my website, stills of these parts, and you can ask me any questions you want to. That's it. Bye for now.